In the second part of our 2050 exam review, we'll look at some basics <coughs> excuse me, of Excel. We'll start out by noticing Excel has a lot of built-in functions that we use, and the trig functions especially are uh, used quite a bit in engineering. Remember that every time you have a function, you have to put an argument, which is the input to the function, in parentheses following the function name. So in the trig functions that we did, cosine, tangent, etc., Remember this, that you have to put the angle in as the argument, and that angle has to be in radians, so it's a place where a lot of mistakes uh, can be made. So if I wanted to find the cosine of pi over 4 radians, uh, well, I don't have to, you know, again, calculate pi over 4 on my calculator. Pi is a, a function within um, Excel, and it's kind of unique in that it's a function without an argument, so because it's a function, you still have to enter the parentheses afterwards, just an empty set of parentheses. So when we type in the angle, it would just be equals pi over 4. And uh, when we take the cosine of that, again, because of the fact that it is in radians, we'll get the correct answer for that. If the angle is in degrees, there is a built-in function within uh, Excel to convert. So you don't have to multiply by pi over 180, you can just use this Excel function radians. And notice that the, um, as opposed to MATLAB, the Excel functions are not case sensitive. So you can type this in in lowercase, Excel will convert it to uppercase um, when, it, when it's entered. And so we've taken the 45 degree angle, converted it to radians, and then taken the cosine. If we do the other thing, if we use an inverse trig function, that output is going to be in radians. And so, as just like radians, there's also a degrees function that takes that angle in radians and will convert it to degrees. So to find the arc sine of 0 0.5, uh, notice we use the parentheses here. We're going to take the arc sine, and then, which will give us an answer in radians, and then we'll convert that to degrees, and of course we get 30 degrees as the answer. So Using parentheses uh, really helps out, especially in, in longer formulas, but the order of commands uh, happens based on parentheses. So we find the radians uh, of the angle first and then do the cosine. And similarly, when we uh, did the arc tangent, we took the arc tangent first, which would give me answer in radians, and it's the secondary operation, then converted that to degrees. The exponential function gets used quite a lot, both in MATLAB and in Excel. And remember to do that, it's the function exp. And so the exponent is as an argument. Don't use the uh, caret to raise that to the minus 3x power. That'll give you an error. So just exp, and then in parentheses, the exponent. When you do scientific no notation in Excel, remember that the number comes out in the shorthand instead of being times 10 to the minus, to the 6th, for example, it'll just say E6. And that can either be capital E or lower E. So 30E6 means 30 million. 30E to the minus 6, again, means 0 0.000030. And this mistake happens every now and then. Remember when you see 30e6, it does not mean 30 uh, times e to the sixth power. In both MATLAB and Excel, operations are performed left to right with exponents first, then multiplication, division, and finally addition and subtraction. If you need to vary that, then you use parentheses. And with both Excel and MATLAB, it's really easy to make mistakes when you enter those long formulas. So with that regard, when you put in a long formula, you should always check, uh, check your work. Take, you know, plug a number or two into your calculator, make sure that works, or as I've had you do, do hand calculations every now and then to confirm that your program is doing things correctly. Because again, the advantage of a program is you can copy this formula and do it a hundred or a thousand times, but if it's wrong, you're just doing it, you're just making a hundred or a thousand mistakes. Now, the if statement uh, is used a lot in Excel, and that's a logical sequence, we call it. And so in Excel, the if statement looks at a condition and then does one thing or the other, or I should say the cell becomes one value or the other, depending on whether the condition is true or false. So let's say we're going to take the absolute value of a number. 
Of course, there is a an Excel built-in function for that, but just to, sh to illustrate how the if statement works. Well, there's a couple of ways you could do it. You could square it and then take the square root, but let's use a logical test instead. So here's how we might say that in words. If the number is less than zero, then take the, the number, else leave the number as it is. And so if, then, else. So how that works is, again, the format of the, the if statement is going to have three arguments. The first argument is going to be the test, the condition. Second argument is what we do if it's true, and the third will be what we do if it's false. So commas separating those things. So here we go. We put in a number into A, and there's our logical test. If that cell, the value in cell A1 is less than zero, then we change its sign. That's what we do if it's true. If it's not true, which means it's zero or a positive number anyway, then we just report that same number back. And you can see the examples uh, just to test out and show that that works. Sometimes a flowchart really helps to illustrate that. And so here would be a flowchart of what we just did, of how to take the absolute value. We read an input number, then we come to a decision point. So that diamond box always means a decision point. There's one thing coming in, and more than one, usually just two, going out. So we do one of two things. If it's true, then we do what's below, output number. We take the negative of the input number. If it's not, then the output number becomes the input number, and then we move on to the next steps. Now, of course, there could always be more than two possible outputs for a given input. And in MATLAB, we'll have the if, else if commands, but in Excel, we just have to nest a bunch of if statements. So we want to take a numerical grade and convert it to an A through F grade. Here's how we would uh, illustrate that on a flowchart. I lead in the number. If X is greater than or equal to 90, then my answer is, is, is known. That grade's an A. If not, I go down to the next if condition and keep going that, keep going along. And so you can see how that all nests in the Excel formula here. It's a little harder to read, so you have to be really careful when you're nesting these if statements in Excel. But if you look at the first one, it just says, what do I do if A1 is greater than or equal to 90? Well, I just return an A. But you can see, then there's a comma, and the next thing says another if statement. What do I do if it's greater than or equal to uh, 80, etc.? Now, if you're going to combine conditions, then AND and OR statements are used. So the format is it's AND with the two conditions, or OR with the two conditions. And of course, logically, if both of them are true in an AND condition, then the, then the statement is true. With the OR, if either one of them is true, then the statement is true. So we'll say in a manufacturing operation that the part has to be between these two values in length, or it's rejected. So in Excel, we use the AND. So the part length is greater than or equal to 1.99, the lower limit, and it's also less than the upper limit. If both those things are true, then we return accept. If either one of those is false, then we return reject. And finally, we looked at lookup tables. In a vertical lookup table, as the vertical implies, the data that you're looking up is in a column. And so the lookup command, you can see, has four arguments here. The first one is the value we're going to look up. The second one is where is the table that contains the data? Which column number do we want to select? And we'll talk about the true-false in just a moment. And it's easier to show with an example. Here are some properties of uh, some metals. And we want to type in the short name here, just A36, which is structural steel A36. And we want to put in its, its name, modulus, specific weight, yield strength, etc. So for the first one, the long name. Well, we enter, first of all, E equals V lookup, because again, our data is in columns. The first argument is, where is the name I want to look up? That's the A36. Then comma, then I highlight the cells where the data is. Uh, don't include the headings on this. Uh, and so in the first column, it's going to look for A36 and try to match that up. 
then since I'm looking since I want to put the long name into this one I'm looking at column 2 it's the second column of that table if I were looking for say the modulus then that would be number 3 specific weight 4 etc and finally the true false if it's true then approximate match is okay if it's false we need an exact match and so uh, if you're looking at, um, at you're trying to look up a value that again you want to make sure that you get an exact match then you want to use false for that and so we add false to that so if I enter a name that's not part of that that's not in that list it will give me an error and that's really what you want you don't want it entering the wrong value because you made a typo uh, typing things in and again there's also HLOOKUP you can see now we've converted that table such that the data we want is in rows instead of columns and the argument uh, the third argument would be the row number instead of the column number remember this they will not interpolate values and if you put a true in there then you will get uh, a value that's rounded down to the next tabulated value so that's could be okay if you're looking at numerical uh, values to look up but when you're looking at categories like we did here with names you never want to do that you always want to make sure that you've got false there to ensure that you're looking up exactly the value that you want so the true option though let me show you in this example here remember we looked at the population of a town uh, it's given every 10 years and so if we use the lookup uh, table here with the true option then uh, which by the way is default so we just looked up the population value we try to correlate that to the table that's given in um, uh, down below and because of the fact there's not an exact match 1956 it looks at the lower value of that so it returns the value from 1950 so that may not be what we really want and so we would learn to use um, uh, linear interpolation in uh, a little bit of a later lesson so a couple of things that if statements really allow you to uh, control how the calculations are performed lookup tables are a nice way to access tabular data but again it's important to remember that uh, the lookup tables do not interpolate between the values and so next time we'll uh, start talking about Excel.